All right, guys, this is a video that I have been asked to do for quite a while. I'm going to run down all of the rods we carry on the boat for all types of striper fishing. We keep probably 90% of these on the boat at all times, depending on where we're going to be, fresh salt, you know, winter, summer, spring, whatever rivers. And I'm just going to run down them real quick, and we'll start with our live bait stuff, okay? Now, for live bait, cut bait, chunk bait, any type of bait, we're going to be using striper stealth rods. These were designed specifically for that, for bait, cut bait, live bait chunks. And the soft tip is paramount, okay? The soft tip keeps the fish from feeling the rod before it has a chance to swallow it. This way you can go ahead and turn the bait, get it in its throat, turn and load the rod, stretch the mono out, and let that circle hook come out and catch the corner to work the way it's supposed to. If you're using a high modulus graphite rod for this, that soft uh, tip of the composite will just outperform it every time. The high modulus graphite is so stiff, it's nice because when you're feeling the rod and holding it, you can feed the fish, you can feel it bite, you can feed him, you can feel him turn it, and you can go ahead and cross his eyes when you need to. But if you're leaving it in a rod holder at that time, fish picks up the bait, feels that rod tip, spits it, circle hook won't work. So everything we use here with bait, live cut, chunks, doesn't matter, eels, shad, bunker, we're going to use a striper stealth rod with a soft tip. Okay, now the reels I like here. Accurate Valiance. I like a low gear reel for everything with bait. These happen to be two speeds, but low gear is king. Don't be tempted to get that high gear and say, well, I can just reel in slower. You're giving up a lot of power for that. You're sacrificing a lot of power. You're gonna have to really pump and take on lighter drag settings. Now, the Valiants are twin drag. What's that mean? It means there's drag on both sides of the spool. I'll put a little cut of video at the end of this showing you the difference between twin drag and regular single drag. Uh, the only reels in the world that have it, twin drag. And it, all it means is it's grabbing the spool from both sides, squeezing evenly like a caliber on a brake. Now, of course, it means I can get crazy amounts of drag on here, but that's not why I use these. I use these because even with the slightest, lightest drag setting, one, two pounds, you have almost no variance in that drag. It's unbelievable. You know, with cheaper and expensive drags, star drags, we have less, less surface area. Say you set your drag for four or five pounds, which isn't a lot. Leave it in a rod holder for an hour. Well, now it takes sometimes three or four extra percent to get that drag moving. So let's say you set it at four pounds of drag. It may take five pounds of drag to get that spool free, unlock it and get it moving. We've all seen this. If you see your rod loading and releasing during the fight, you know that zzz, zzz, as, a, as a fish is taking line, that's what's happening. It's taking more pressure to get that spool moving. You'll never see that with twin drag with all the giant surface area. So that's the big difference here for me. That's what I see in the quality. It's not necessarily a super high drag setting. It's that I get no variable, really no variance at all with the very lightest of drag settings. Great rod and reel setup. Again, striker stealth. This reel in the low gear is about 425 bucks. There are cheaper options. I'm going to show you them right now. Now, from the Accurate Valiant, Accurate Fury. Every striped bass fisherman in the world who owns a boat should have these reels. Fresh water, salt water, this is the animal for you. 225 bucks, not that expensive. It has all of the same materials as a $500 Accurate Boss Extreme. The only difference is it has drag on one side like every other reel in the world versus twin drag. That's it, same bearings, same stainless, same aluminum, there's almost no plastic at all in here, all made in America. These reels start with a billet of cylinder of aluminum. They grind away everything that's not a reel, and that's what you get left. It's an incredible reel. 225 bucks, depending on the size you want. Giant drag on one side. Incredible performance all the way around. Loud clicker. If you've used anything less than this, I say there's two types of people, the people that haven't used an Accurate and the people that own Accurates. I mean, that's just all there is to it. If you use them fishing for a while, you'll have to have them. For 225 bucks, there's no excuse to be using something less. If you're spending $200 on a reel anyway, you just can't possibly get more quality in a reel than the Fury. Again, Striper Stealth Rod. All right, let's say you like the Star Drag. This is the new Accurate Turn. 
with a star drag. I like lever drags. You'll notice I don't like level lines. I almost have, I probably don't have a single reel here that I fish bait with that has a level line. Don't like them, I get cross up all the time, you lose fish. Me personally, I don't like them. If you do like a star drag, that turns bad, 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 bad boy right there. Twin drag, I'll show you again in the video the difference between their, their, their drag systems here and the star drag and the lever drag. All the same quality, all the same parts, same aluminum, same stainless, same bearings. In a twin drag on the star, this one runs about 225, I believe, as well. Again, we're using bait, so we're using striper stealth rods. All right, those are our three rods for bait fishing. We're going to use that for bunker in salt water, herring in fresh water, skipjacks, uh, gizzard shad, threadfin shad, anything with bait, eels, drifting eels, anything. We're using striper stealth. Those are our three rods. Those are when the rods are in the rod holder at strike. Now, we keep these on the boat, and any of these will work, but if I want to go trolling, I don't carry separate rods. I just carry these line counters here, and we just clamp them on right here. 30-pound mono. I'll change the leader or top shot as we go. Again, rod in the rod holder for bait. These three are our setups. If I'm going to troll, I'll add a line counter. Okay, let's move on to jigging. Let's start with our lighter stuff. Do a lot of jigging. Right now especially, it's cooling off a little bit. These bass or stripers are transitioning from deep water up to points. We'll be pulling baits right up on the bank soon, but right now they're transitioning. We get them in 25, 30 feet of water, vertical jigging. This is the accurate turn. It's a 300 narrow, $225 reel. It's a star drag. What I like about it for jigging is, you know, we can drop it really quick. Work it up to the boat, drop it really quick, work it up to the boat. Now this is a slow pitch rod, it's an accurate slow pitch rod. You don't have to spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars on a rod. What you want is short, okay, this is only uh, six foot ten. High modulus graphite, very stiff tip, and you want a long butt because when this rod is under your shoulder here, you're working it up, working it up, working it up, working it up. So the idea is you're pulling that jig off the bottom like it's trying to flee, and it's dying and so going back down and you're yanking it up and it's going back down. So it's a bait that's trying to get up off the bottom but just can't. And you're working it up, working it up, working it up. Very light jig, 100 gram or less, that's what I use there. I use 30 to 50 pound braid and my top shot here is 30 feet of fluorocarbon. This here only has 15 pound test fluorocarbon and you know, I'll go up heavier if I need to. Now I put 30 feet on there and the reason I do that is my FG knot is right here, it attaches my fluoro to my braid. And this way I know when I drop it, when I hit the knot here, I know I'm 30 feet down. And it's a great reference point. It really lets me keep the boat, I'm sorry, keep the bait in that strike zone without me constantly looking at the fish finder and trying to figure out where I am. Really, really good, good trick right there. 30 feet I start with, sometimes I do 20. Uh, FG knot, great knot. Let's move on to the next one. Light jigging. All right, a little heavier jigging. All right, say we're using 100 gram above, 150 gram, 200 gram jigs. This here is just a stiffer rod. It's a little heavier rod. Again, it's short. This one is seven foot. Seven foot's even a little long for jigging. I like to keep it between that six and seven foot. Nice long butt, again, so I can go ahead and work it, work it up. You'll see some of mine are left-handed, some are right-handed. I prefer to jig with left-handed, but I also use this for drifting eels sometimes, which is why I have the right-handed retrieve. Again, we have our 30, uh, pound braid, 30 to 50 pound braid depending. This one has 50 on it because it's a little heavier. And I have 30 feet of fluorocarbon attached with an FG knot. Okay, So that's my little heavier jigging. That's what I'll use it for. I'll also use it for drifting eels close to the bottom. Right, We're going over structure. But the rod is in my hand. Whenever you see braid on any of these reels, the rod is always in my hand. I can feed the fish and the stiffness and no stretch uh, capabilities of the braid will not scare fish away. They pick it up they're going to feel the, re the reel just like I feel them, but I'm going to go ahead and cross their eyes before they know it. So I don't put it in a rod holder when I have braid. Bad habit, you will lose fish that way. All right, let's get heavier. Now we're talking heavy jigging or jigging right in structure where I can't let that fish get an inch of line. I've had this reel for a long time. It's a accurate dauntless. The difference between the dauntless and the other twin drag reels is it has an anti-reverse system in it. 
but it also has dog and paw system. Okay. I don't yank big heavy lead. I'm not pulling 60, 600 gram jigs or anything like that. But when you're working bait close to the bottom and you really can't let that fish get an inch, it's not going to move with this. I have 80 pound braid on this. This is a seven foot rod again. I really don't like to go higher than seven foot when the rod is in my hand, especially for jigging. This reel here, the, you know, the, the anti-reverse is, is fine. It's more than enough. The, the dog and paw system is really for guys that are yanking a real heavy lead and they're just doing this all day, all day long. And they're just working on that AR bearing and the dog and paw system keeps, you know, keeps any failure from happening. You won't have it. You really don't need the Dauntless for this, but any of the Accurate, the Fury will kick tail for this. This is a 400 narrow. It's their smallest. The newer versions of the Valiants, they call it 300, but it's your narrow spool right there. I'll have 50 to 80 pound braid on here and I'll change my top shot as I go. Low gear, this one's a two speed because that's all the Dauntless comes in, but low gear, high gear if you need to get him out of uh, structure quick, but low gear, man, will give you that power where you don't have to pump and take so much. Love this rod and reel setup. All right, let's back up here just a touch. This is a Valiant 300. This is one of the first ones that came out. No clicker on this. And what I like this for, for uh, basically it's a very light jigging setup. Very small jigs. Also, I'll use it for drifting eels close to the bottom in open water, not a whole lot of structure. Now it is twin drag, incredibly powerful drag. Left-handed retrieve, you'll see. And I'll, I always like, you know, you'll see I never have a level wind and I like lever drags. Number one, first and foremost. I do a star drag for some, for you know, for a jigging up and down where I'm going to drop, bring it up, drop, and work on it all day long. But for drifting bait, when I want the rod in my hand, like we'll use live bunker on this sometimes, going across rips, and I want to feel everything, so I'll use my braid, drop it down, and I can, you know, work the work the bait, work the bait, let a little line out, let a little line out, let a little line out. I really can control it here with my lever drag. Valiant 300. This is the cheap. This is a, what is this? I know what it is. It's a quantum, just a regular old bass, uh, largemouth bass rod. That's all it is. It's just something that's graphite. doesn't have to be very expensive. It's probably a $60 rod. Something I can feel the bottom, feel the bait, feel my braid, feel the bait getting nervous. Light jigging, drifting with baits close to the bottom. Great for fluking. Uh, maybe blackfish too. Probably need a little heavier rod for that, but great setup there. All right, now what if we're casting, right? The only time you're going to see me with level wines, all right? I have a heavy, this is a Revo Toro, Abu. You see how wide that is? I think the new one's called the Beast. This one is pretty old, maybe 10 years old. Nice wide spool. I'll use this for chucking big plugs. Allen's big predators, Allen De Palma's baits. It's great for that. I can chuck a country mile with this. It's not a very stiff rod. You see it's soft. It's actually a crankbait rod is what it is. And the reason I do that is I know myself and I know if I'm working a top water plug back to the boat and I see that fish smash on that bait, I'm going to yank and I'm going to pull that plug out half the time. It's such a hard thing not to do. The softness of this rod kind of saves me a little bit. When I yank, the softness of the rod gives me that split second delay to keep the bait in the fish's face a little bit longer. So it uh, works for me. It's just a big crankbait rod. It looks heavier than it is because it's fiberglass, okay? You can see, it's a whippy rod. 50 pound braid, I'll change my top shot as I go. Usually 30 to 40 pound floor, I get a little heavy on the top shot because I'm chucking those big plugs all day long, okay? If you're gonna go with a uh, bait caster, what I like about these is the level wind pays out in reverse when you cast. I don't know if you can see that or not. The level one goes back and when the drag pays out it also goes out so it keeps you from getting cross up where you have the line coming off the spool here but the guide is over here bad news right there all right move on all right jigging close to the bottom casting out jigs and working them back the all pro slayer jigs the skirt jigs with a bkd body or twisty tail whatever you want to work in by bridge pilings rocks where we're casting out and it's on the bottom and we're working it back i use a high speed reel for this this is a quantum smoke eight to one speed freak very fast 
You don't have much power, so you will have to pump and take, but it's okay. You want to get those fish out of those rocks quick. 30 to 50 pound braid. I have my FG knot, and I only have about 10 feet of fluoro on this. I don't need a whole lot because I'm not jigging straight down vertically. The reason I go with a longer 30, pound, uh, 30 foot leader when I'm vertically jigging is one, the knot tells me how far I'm down. And two, I don't want my braid running through a giant school of fish. Having that braid in there that could possibly scare these giant schools of fish. So I have a longer leader for that. Here I have a shorter leader. I'm just casting and working it back about 10 feet on this. And I'll change the top shot as I go. This is a stiff rod. This is a little bit longer, seven foot six, high modulus graphite, stiff. It's just a bass, uh, large mouth bass rod. It's probably $100. This one is Abu Garcia. I don't know, what is that? Veritas? Veritas, whatever. As long as it's high modulus graphite, something light, you can cast it all day long and feel that jig work. Small reel, I can cast it all day long and it won't wear me out. Great for jigging on the bottom. I really like this reel. Okay, let's say you're running and gunning and you see a school breaking on the way in and the way out. Gotta have something light ready to go. This is a short rod, six foot six. This one is a G. Loomis. It was my father's from years ago. I don't have very much luck with G. Loomis rods. I tend to break them a lot. The high modulus graphite, they're a little, little brittle to me. If I drop them or I get angry and place it down vigorously, <laughs> I've broken a bunch of them. Not a big fan of the cork handle, but this rod has made it through the years. This is one of my father's reels too. This is a uh, Shimano, I don't know, Calais, Calais, I don't know how you say it. It's an expensive reel, casts really nice. And it, what's nice about it is it can cast very light baits. You can see here, that's just a BKD. Little heavy wire hook, just to give me a little more weight to cast it. And I can cast this thing a country mile with no weight on it. Very light setup. Like I said, it's only six foot 10. The whole thing is very, very light. 30 pound braid on this. And uh, I'll change my top shot again as we go. Short top shot, 10 feet. Great for casting on schools when they're breaking, light stuff. Uh, good for fluke too. Pretty good. Now say so you're a spinner rod guy. This thing has saved the day many times. Eight footer, nice and long, nice and stiff. This rod is pretty inexpensive. It is, I don't know if you can read that. It's a Clap Captain Blair Wiggins. It's a Wright and McGill inshore slam. They have this, I think seven foot 10, seven foot six, eight foot. This is the eight footer. I think this rod is about 110 bucks, 99 bucks I think is what it was. Now I have an accurate SR6 on here. The new pens look pretty nice around this size. What I like about you know the accurates, they have twin drag obviously, but uh, I like that they cast a country mile. They really cast nice. The spool, I don't know, the, the, the shape of the spool just seemed to cast a little further than reels this size. Usually when you go this small, you really limit your casting distance because of that small coils, you know. I have a pretty light braid on this, only 15 pound braid, and I'll have a, you know, again, I'll vary my top shot. But this thing is designed just to whip a small jig, a fluke, a BKD with no lead on it, very similar to what we had on, on this rod here. And I can whip this a country mile. I can just whip this sucker eight, eight foot and get it out there nice and stiff. I'm not gonna pull live bait with this. It's cast and retrieve artificials only. And you can, it's probably a good fluke setup too. All right guys, those are basically the rods and reels that I keep on the boat. For my bait rods, I'll keep eight on the boat, eight to 10 usually, and I'll set aside some for trolling if I need to. Be prepared to do everything when you go out there. If you have it in your head that I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna troll today and that's it and that's all I'm gonna do, that's fine. You know, if you fish the same body of water all the time, chances are you know those fish very well and you know where to go and you can go ahead and, and fill your box or catch fish all day. But if you're gonna go to a lot of places, be prepared to fail. If you're gonna go out there and hammer it in your head, you're only gonna do one thing one way. You're leaving a lot of fish out there. You're leaving a lot of fun out there. And those extra methods, be prepared to change. I'll, I'll go out there and I will have this boat ready for bait. I'll have it ready for trolling. I'll have it ready for casting. For those three things, it has to be ready for all three. Pretty simple. You, have, you guys have any questions? please put them in the comments. If you like the video, please give it one of these. If you hate it, you can give it one of these. I'm a big boy, I can take it. If you have any ideas for videos, please post them in the comments, let me know. Stay safe on the water, leave a few for me. Please subscribe, I love you guys. Thanks for watching.
All right, guys, I wanted to take a few seconds here and talk about the differences between a lever drag and a star drag. I've seen uh, quite a few discussions on it, and I think this might help here. So let's go ahead and do it. I went and opened up a few reels. Let's start here with the Accurate Fury lever drag, single drag, okay? Single drag is what every other reel in the world has, okay? Just single drag. You're going to notice right away the size of that drag right there. Okay, it is a giant, giant carbon fiber friction washer. Okay, now it is on the spool. That is the most efficient way for a drag to work on the spool. Think of brakes on your car. What would work better, brakes on the wheels or brakes on the transmission, right? Brakes on the wheels are the most efficient. So not only is it on the wheel, but it is a massive drag. So when you look at a lever drag, you can get an idea of the size of the drag by the size of the spool. So a, a narrow like this has a larger diameter spool, so you kind of get that larger drag. Accurate uses heavy duty stainless springs to push the stainless disc away, okay? That's very important because you can keep these locked down tight and it will not destroy or flatten out that spring over time. And they're very easy to replace. I took these reels apart in just a few minutes. Okay, now let's compare that to a star drag. Now this is a star drag I took out of a reel that has the same line capacity as this, if you can believe that. That is your drag in there. Now the drag on star drags are on the main gear. Okay, this is the main gear. You can see if I tighten it, it applies drag to the main gear if I tighten it a little more, okay. Now, to get an idea of the size drag you're going to have, you can look at any reel that has a star drag to get an idea of the size of your drag because the drag is on the main gear. So this is a larger reel than the reel I took this out of. Not much larger, but it is larger. So you can see there's not much room for a giant you know, main gear in there, so you can kind of guess the size of the drag that's in there versus that big bad boy right there. Now you could put a lot more line on that than you could on this, yet the drag is, my goodness, three, four, five times, I don't know how many times the size, but very, very much, uh, very much more surface area right there. So you can get a good idea when you look at a star drag, just by looking at it, you get an idea of the drag size. Now, what Accurate did when they came out with their star drag was, they said, we're gonna do twin drag on it, and right away, look at the size of the main gear in that versus the main gear in that, right? That is a giant main gear, so you get a good idea of the size of the drag. So if you're gonna buy a star drag, doesn't matter what brand it is, look for the biggest main gear you can because that's your largest drag. Now what is twin drag? Man, this one has been going on and on and on and somehow I've avoided opening up a reel and showing it. Twin drag looks a lot like this, okay? Standard lever drag that you see on almost any reel. Same thing, right? But there's two. So it's identical drag, but it's on both sides and it works like a disc brake in a car. So you already have a massive drag and then you double it. And first thing people think of is, wow, that's gonna give me so much drag and way more drag than I need, you know? And that's true, it can give you a massive amount of drag. But with all this surface area here, even on this super, super lightest settings, one pound, less than a pound, two pounds of drag, you will get performance like you have never ever seen before. 13 years I've been using these twin drag reels and what a difference. You will never get stick and release, stick and release like you can with smaller drags. You know what I'm talking about where the, the, the rod loads, releases, loads, releases, loads, releases, never happens with these twin drags. So while I had these open, I just wanted to show you what twin drag is and there's no stack of bent washers it all uses a single heavy duty stainless spring on each side to push these away incredible system absolutely incredible now what they did with the turn was they added that same twin drag system to their main gear on their turn reel star drags so you can see on the main here what a star drag does take this off real quick a little gunked up it's an old reel they don't use a standard spring 
Uh, in most of the reels that I've seen anyway, there might be some star drag brands that use, use a spring. But since I was a kid, all the ones I've seen use a stack of bent washers. So this one has two, you see two bent washers, that acts as your spring. So when you leave your star drag locked all the way down, it'll eventually flatten those out, which is no good. So you'll see here, the drag is basically on this, on one side of the main gear. So you'll see a stack. You have your, your washer and then your friction washer, washer and friction washer. Now they do stick another friction washer, a tiny one on this side for slippage, but uh, it's definitely not twin drag. So what Accurate did, I'm having them send me an assembly so I could show you guys in another video when I open this reel up. This main gear here and here is massive and it's being squeezed on both sides with giant carbon friction washers just like this spool is being squeezed. So if you're going to go with a star drag for two reasons, you want to go with this one here, the turn, one for the massive size of the main gear, but you're getting twin drag that squeezes both sides. <laughs>